tired of these dusty, crusty braids. Like, I need to take these out. And I'm stalling because I honestly, I want to tell y'all this story. But it's just so maddening. So, on another episode of Charisma, sharing some very intimate and vulnerable stories to complete strangers on the internet. <laughs> Welcome. <sighs> Mm -mm. I want to take out my braids and I figured this is some good time to spend with y'all. By the way, if you can guess today exactly how long I've had these braids in, I'll buy you a drink. Whatever you like. Coffee, block of crayon, I don't know, tea, whatever you want. Um, yeah. <sighs> I'm called to tell y'all this story because it can help somebody but it is extremely humiliating, but not really. So in this episode of exposing way too much of myself on the internet, I'm gonna be telling y'all about a story where I just refuse to listen to God. He or she <laughs> was telling me, telling me to leave this man alone. Now I'm debating if I should tell you both stories. There's one in particular with one individual rather that I'm gonna tell y'all, but I'll think about adding the second one after I'm done telling y'all this one. So, well, first of all, this is a, not an unboxing, <laughs> it's a um, unbraiding. I do feel like this story will help a young individual. So yeah, let's get into it. Basically telling y'all about this dude that I was dating and how I kept getting signs that I need to stop talking to this dude but I wouldn't listen. I mean, it was all of it wasn't even blatant at first. Some things I'm looking back and I'm like, yeah, that was a sign. So I don't blame myself. We all make mistakes and I learn from mine and I learn from other people's mistakes and I'm stalling. <clears throat> so if you didn't know, I have a really shitty pair of scissors. What the heck? Like, okay, I'm back. <clears throat> so if you didn't know, I had a job at Chipotle, which I really liked at first. And you can watch a video on how I got fired from that job. Press the little button up there. Or, yeah, up there somewhere. And um, <clears throat> we'll get into that as well throughout this story. Because that plays a role. But I worked at Chipotle. And... <laughs> I I just I had co-workers that I really vibe with and we would hang out sometimes um, there was a core group of us that were there from the initiation of the restaurant because we had opened up a new one in Jacksonville and yeah eventually we started hiring more people and one of the people that were hired was the guy that we're talking about in this story. So, yeah. Didn't really like him at first. I didn't even think he was attractive. Um, I'm not sure how we like actually got together. All of that is a blur. But I do know that after work sometimes, and even just whenever, I would go over to one of my coworkers' house. It was a guy, and he lived in my neighborhood. Oh, real cool guy. I would take him to work sometimes and bring him home from work sometimes because we stay in the same neighborhood <laughs> and sometimes we work the same shifts even. And so yeah, and let's call the guy Tyler that we're talking about in this story, right? I'm trying to get to the point, but I gotta set up the backdrop for you, the scenery. So yeah, I <laughs> eventually started dating. Tyler, which was one of the guys um, who worked, I think he worked in the kitchen. I would work on the line sometimes. I mean, I would work in the kitchen like prep, and then eventually I was working like the takeout. And so, yeah, that's how I met the guy. So, the first sign that guy was trying to show me. <laughs> Danger! <laughs> Stop talking to this person. They're not meant for you. We were just outside because eventually he had started living with me. 
um yeah i lived a hot mess of a life and yeah that was stupid <laughs> and i lived in like one of those what happened to this guy huh. i lived in one of those like college apartments i don't even want to face like look in the camera because i feel so ashamed but anyway i um <laughs> was living in these apartments with three different roommates and he would stay in my room with me and I just looked back and I'm like, what the f***? Why did I do that? And so, yeah, one day we were downstairs walking my dog. And I got stung by a wasp. Um, that shit hurt. That, that's not... I hate wasps, like, because of that. That was my first time getting stung by a wasp ever. And it was terrible. Not once while we were out there, but twice. I got stung by two wasps. It was a great day. <laughs> I'm including that as one of the signs because not during that time, but now I understand some things about spiritual symbolism and like totems and I'm just going to read to y'all what a wasp means. If you are stung by a wasp, it's her way of saying wake up, do your spiritual work. Alternatively, the wasp is letting you know that resistance to change is by definition self-sabotage. It's time to allow yourself the notion that all things are possible and that you deserve to have all your dreams come true. I'll put the source um, down in the description, but that just, that's just, that just makes so much sense looking back. So the second thing that I was trying to avoid, <sighs> wait, I feel like my hair was longer than this. <laughs> okay, why did I beat him? So he was like, I don't really know. Okay, but what I did know about him um, at the time, he had moved from New York. He said he like had a troubled life in New York and he came down here, I guess, to change and get a job. And so he did that. It's just now. I'm just gonna let y'all know, I haven't dated, been in a relationship, like seriously been even focused on anyone, like, you know, as far as attraction or whatever. But looking back now, I'm just cringe, like, ugh. Yeah, just looking back, I'm disgusted. <clears throat> So it's like some things I'm like, oh, I don't even want to tell y'all. <laughs> uh, I'm so disgusted. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, he wasn't necessarily. I don't know. Okay, okay, oh, okay. I remember now. Okay, I remember now. It's coming back to me. These braids are. I can't even say they're tight because these things are loose, and my hair feels kind of dry. We're stalling. You guys, you guys are making me be vulnerable, but I want to tell y'all because I feel like this will help somebody. Y'all didn't tell me I had this water behind me. Y'all are disrespectful. Anyway, let's see. What do I want to really say? Like, I have been trying to script out this video because it is, it's, it's, this is serious. We're talking about having discernment and being able to what's the word not pick but like be able to yeah i guess pick out the right kinds of people to have in your life i think y'all get what i mean oh yeah this is a serious topic and i feel like maybe if you're here maybe there's a certain individual that you are questioning or maybe you're ignoring certain things that are telling you to stop talking to this person and I'm just wanting to share with you. I wrote down six things here. So it's like constantly, constantly, constantly something is happening to disrupt your peace. And it's just like, it's not even worth it. Like, it's not worth it. Like for me, I have not had this much peace since I was a little embryo. What am I saying? <laughs> Let's have an intermission. <laughs> I guess 
I better get back in to why we're here, right? Ah, so okay. We started kind of talking at the job and then we would hang out sometimes in a group. And then eventually we started hanging out. And then like I told you, I told you before. Um, yeah, we eventually moved in. And we were planning to move out with one of my friends. And we were gonna split rent all together. Which, looking back, I'm like even more disgusted. So what had happened was my roommate got fed up with me. We would, and yeah, she didn't like that. And I didn't even realize it was like noticeable or whatever. And so she called security on us. So bop, 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 security is knocking on my door. I wasn't doing anything. I was in my room by myself and Trevor, is that the name we gave him? Was it Tyler? Tyler, he was at work. So I called the work. And I was like, um, can I speak with Tyler? And let's just be for real. So about this guy's background, like, I don't know, he made it seem like he was getting in a lot of trouble in New York and he came here and he didn't want to do that anymore. He was trying to get a business off the ground. And yeah, my roommate ended up calling security on me, on us rather, and when they came and knocked on the door she knocked on my door and she was like um police or security is here it looked like the security guard that would like monitor our neighborhood all that happened though with that they literally had me come out in the hallway and we were talking he was just like yeah your roommate called us because they have suspicions that you have narcotics and i'm like okay well i don't because i didn't <laughs> And they were like, okay. <laughs> and I went back in my room <laughs> and that was it. It was just really stupid. But what happened was, I don't know, I started freaking out. And so he had a lot of his stuff there and something told me to like go through his stuff. And my guy had like a whole zip in my closet. Not in his car, in my closet. And I was freaking out. I was like, what if they would have came in here and like searched my shit like I just searched his? And let me tell y'all, y'all, this guy, I don't know what he had on me. Like he had something on me, y'all. Because I bought him some shoes. I don't know why. Okay, I kind of know why. This was like towards the end of our relationship. I low-key kind of felt, felt bad because I was about to break up with him. But he didn't have no nice shoes. And so we went to like a Foot Locker or somewhere in town center finish line and I bought him some nice little probably some vans or something I don't remember what they were and they were nice and I also bought him like a whole dresser or whole drawers of like undergarments like he needed socks underwear I br basically brought in a homeless man <laughs> to live with me and like he had had me meet his mom we went to their apartment and it was just weird i was just like standing in her room just talking to her for a little bit it was just a weird encounter and yeah i was a fool <laughs> i was wilding but yeah so after they after the security had came and left i freaked out and i was searching his shit like as if I was um, security. I was like, where would I look? And I didn't go through stuff like that. Like he had a, like a, a duffel bag or something in my closet and that was in there. So I called Chipotle <laughs> and I freaking have my manager put Tyler on the phone. Okay, so yeah, that's where we ended up. <sighs> just um, recollecting on this is just so annoying. I hate it, but it's a part of my journey and that's why we're here right <laughs> and somebody needs to hear this i don't know who but eventually it'll get to the right people yeah that was basically the second point just that i'm like i stay really lay low i'm under the radar police don't see me and i was just like <sighs> just so annoyed 
yeah that happened oh yeah yeah so after um i got off the phone with him um i went up to the job and i literally told him keep this shit with you like i didn't realize what i was getting myself into that was the second sign and i still was stupid i still was holding on and it was like this your man it was like, look at the screen. And I looked at the screen. It was like, hey, I'm going to stick beside him. <laughs> I'm going to stick beside him. This whole series of events gets a little even more cringier. So y'all hold on. And I'll just keep stalling a little bit more. Because, yeah, it gets, it gets worse. <laughs> it, it, oh, let me see this. Hold on. Yeah, it gets worse. I, I would never put myself through through this again. And it wasn't even like it was a fulfilling relationship in any other aspect except for me pouring into him like i was he wanted to have like a a restaurant and i was like yeah you can go back to school go to culinary school you can get back on your feet <laughs> you can get back up on your feet you got it let's work out my dude was frail i was like let's get you let's get a little bulkier because that's when I started getting back into my fitness journey and I was taking fitness more serious and I was going to the gym in my neighborhood and so yeah the next events kind of threw a wrench in my plans it really did it really did it really did oh let me write this point down I forgot this is really the kicker don't ever try to date the plug y'all even if he says he doesn't want to sell anymore he said, you're not gonna be doing that no more. He doing that, that's a source of income. That is like a lifestyle when you're used to that shit, that's quick money. Don't be listening to these guys. Do not listen to these guys, oh my gosh. Like I'm telling y'all, just focus. On, I know everybody says it like, just focus on you, get you some hobbies, get you a YouTube channel, talk to a camera, tell your business online. You know, find something there. Somebody will pay you. <laughs> okay, my phone had died. But yeah, so back to the regularly scheduled events here. Talking about some cringy ass shit that happened to me. No, that happened for me, really. The third sign that I should have stopped talking to this dude was when I was planning on moving in with this girl. Oh yeah, this girl... I met she lived in my neighborhood she had a youtube channel she probably still does and like she would borrow my light and yeah we were cool we were like inspiring each other we had started looking at apartments because we were like we can like collaborate and live together that'd be so cool and so eventually she, um, i asked her could i bring my guy and we split the rent to three and to thirds instead it's not really a sign it was just like really you gonna make this mistake again and i might as well tell y'all the second about the second guy just tell y'all about him it's not really gonna be points I, i'm just gonna let y'all know about this guy so it ties into this um point that i'm making about tyler though i was really just stupid <laughs> it's just so annoying the fourth point well yeah i got in a car accident with this guy i was driving I was actually going to my grandma's 75th birthday, my great grandma, the day after or the day of. And so I woke up real early and we went to IHOP together and it was just like a little, okay, like, you know, something cute, you know, nice little breakfast. It was like early, it was like before six or probably was around six, something like that. And we were leaving. I filled up my tank of gas. <sighs> Yeah, we got in an accident. Basically, I was driving out of the gas station and I was on the road going straight and this guy literally T-boned me. He was in the turning lane, like where it has a yield sign and you're trying to make a U-turn or turn left. And he was making a U-turn and not even a U-turn. It was like where he was trying to go was like, he's here and he's trying to go here, not, not make a U-turn. And so I'm driving, and so he's trying to go here, and he boom. Man, that happened. Pretty much totaled the 
driver's side of my car because it literally hit my side. And yeah, now I have like back issues. Oh, yo, I forgot too. I forgot. Speaking of like cars and this whole situation with him, I got my first freaking first and last ticket. Oh my God. I have never since then or before then ever gotten a ticket. They, I got a picture of me in him in my car driving you can't really see us but they took a picture to prove that it's my car and sent it to me with a bill it was like 80 something dollars i was just like oh my god i'm so tired i'm so tired i'm so drained i'm like i'm over it <laughs> things were dwindling down and quickly plans were changing like i was starting to get it i was start it was starting to hit me i was like damn but that happened before the car accident. So the next thing, of course, infamous, how I lost my job at Chipotle. <laughs> and so that was really the biggest breakaway from him. I no longer saw him every day at work. So it was not as hard. And I feel so bad because somebody that I actually liked spending time with, I, I was like, I remember one time I texted him and I was like, I'm not gonna be able to talk to you anymore <laughs> because I was talking to this dude. I literally cut off one of my favorite individuals, even him. Um, yeah, that was never gonna be anything either. So it is what it is. But still, like just the sacrifices and the pouring into him, it was just like, for why? Like I, that's the thing. That's what I wanted to tell y'all. Like it wasn't even a fulfilling like balance, like where it's like, oh, at least I, at least I got this. No, this nigga did nothing for me. <laughs> this man did nothing for me, y'all. It was just tragic. The whole situation was just tragic. It was just a series of unfortunate events, truly. And this is the last one. This is the kicker. Oh no, this too. Oh, sh the next thing that happened was one night he was downstairs in his car, probably smoking. Well, he was outside. Something just told me, look in his phone. Just not that I'm trying to catch him doing anything because I like wasn't trying to see if he was talking to another girl or anything like that. But just something told me, just look in his messages. And I looked at his messages, y'all. He had two phones. <laughs> this isn't even funny like this is serious like this you can get yourself locked up for shit like this he was like selling something i don't even know some of something else i don't know if it was pills or something i can't remember what it said but it was like something hard like some hard drugs like weed is one thing but you sound like perks i feel like it was perks or i don't know what it said i can't remember I don't know much about other drugs or drugs, period, because marijuana, cannabis, weed, it's not a drug. It's literally a plant. It's natural. <laughs> Get what I'm saying? It's natural. It has benefits. And I'm not saying other drugs don't have benefits. I just don't with pills, perks, smolly. Probably was, I can't remember what it was, but I saw that and I immediately was just so pissed. I was like, no, like you literally say you don't sell drugs anymore, like. Somehow, some way, after I lost my job, the lease was coming to an end, I remember, because we that's why we were looking for some place else to live. And I eventually, I moved back with my mom. Lost contact with him. But here's the thing, somehow, oh, he had kept, I don't know why, this is on him. I did not tell him to do this. I was helping him like get his stuff together. He was looking for another job that paid more, like I think the warehouse or something. And he had his birth certificate, he had his resumes. He put it with my stuff, like where I keep my files and like, you know, keepsakes, like important papers and such and my birth certificate so when he had moved out he didn't even take his stuff and so i didn't want to see him again i i was like i don't ever want to see you again type energy and so i was like i'm going to give your um birth certificate to our mutual friend that lives in my neighborhood that you work with as well and you're gonna get it from him 
I don't ever want to see you again. My life was fine. I was living my life like it's golden before I met you. And I don't ever want to live this way again. <laughs> so leave me alone. So I took it and he wasn't home. So I left it. Looking back, it's kind of sh I left it in like a manila folder or something. Either under the mat or on the little, oh, it was on the clip where you, cause we had like these little clips on our um, apartment by the door of each one of our doors where they put their announcements in mail. So I put it there and it wasn't long before once somebody came. I think he said his roommate came and he came home before him. So he ended up bringing it inside the house. Tell me why. Tell me why, tell me why I went back home And I looked in my folders Jesus help me Lord be assured And I saw his birth certificate sitting in my sh but he texted me, he was like, this is your birth certificate. <laughs> Just like this video, that was a whole mess. Oof, I need to wash my mess. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I still got some braids left to take out, and I ain't really got nothing else to say. So I guess I'll tell y'all about this other guy, which kind of ties into Tyler's story. Let's name this other guy... Let's call him Trevor, since I wanted to say Trevor earlier. I'm going to put it this way. Despite the name, Tyler was a black guy. Trevor is a white guy, which still with the name, it makes sense. But just to put in perspective for y'all. So Trevor was a white guy. I probably met him going into my sophomore year. Prior to me like even getting on the dating apps, I was in a long-term relationship, long distance when we broke up I was like I'm in college I'm gonna date and I'm gonna even date guys that are outside my race so up until college I hadn't dated any white guy and so I thought he was super cute but looking back he's dirty he was dirty I would go to his house and he lived with his mom and I would be in his room and his room would be so filthy to the point where I cleaned his room and his mom was just so happy. <laughs> I was just setting up the scenery for him just to help y'all understand we're not the same race and that matters in the story. We had dated, I had met him online, of course. I was still living on campus when I met him. And I remember I had came down, met a total stranger off the internet, came downstairs, he was driving me around. We had dated and then we broke up and I dated somebody else. This guy proposed to me after I was trying to break up with him. And then I ended up going back to him, going back to Trevor right after that. And the guy who like proposed to me was stalking me and Trevor like threatened him. And it was just a mess y'all. <laughs> I've been through some weird I had moved in with Trevor eventually. I remember we had moved in on Valentine's Day and his parents helped us move in. And like, I was just so disappointed because we didn't do anything for Valentine's Day. I was like, this is like the perfect opportunity to sweep me off my feet. You know what I mean? Like it's Valentine's Day, we successfully moved into our apartment together. Some things like God was trying to tell me to stop talking to him. His friend was like calling him an inward lover. read the room i brought it to his attention i was like so you're not gonna tell your friend to stop calling you a your lover you love me right you that's what you're saying right like just totally avoiding the situation another thing was i had found like in a search that that's my problem i was going through guys phones i shouldn't have done that would never seen this he was like looking up ebony which is like it's not bad but at the same time it's like it depends on how you look at it it's like are you fetishizing 
fetishizing, fetishizing, whatever the word is. Do you have a fetish for a black woman? Is that, cause that feels weird. You as a white man, I mean, but at the same time, I mean, you're dating a black girl, so maybe you just wanna, I don't know. I thought that was weird. His best friend all up in our room, all up in our space, having that energy that I'm a, <laughs> and he's a lover. It was like, y'all, the guy worked like 12 hour shifts. I would never see him. So I was like eventually so lonely to the point where I wanted a dog. And that's when I got my dog, which I don't regret because I love him. That happened. I found, I found him cheating on me and I still stayed. He was like, talk to this girl on some app. And yeah, just really suspicious. He was just doing, he never did what he said he was gonna do. It's just so many things. God was like, this what you want, babes? Let's shake things up, <laughs> you know? And I tell y'all, I literally, I literally lived with Guy for one month. I don't even think a whole month. And it was just a process getting my name off the lease. And I think the guy that called me a moved in with him or no. Yeah, it's probably him. He was just a big sloppy, ugh, just disgusting guy. I put up with it. I stood by my man. I stood by him. Ladies, like we have to do better. We set the bar, we set the standard and I'm just listening to people in Clubhouse. I'm watching guys and interact on Twitter and all the socials and I just don't like what I'm hearing. So many people have like just dropped the bar completely. It's like it's like in, in quicksand or something and you can't get it out. It's ridiculous. What we are accepting is what these guys are gonna give us. It's not even always about the guys. I'm I'm happy. I got everything going for me. I have so much potential. I've learned so much about me. I have so many goals and aspirations. I I literally, if I met the man who I'm going to spend life, my life with right now, I would have to find room on my calendar to fit him in. That's how it should be, ladies. It, it has to be that way. And I'm not a relationship coach. I'm not a guru of any sort. I am not a master of one thing. I am skilled in many. <laughs> but... I'm just here to share my perspective, bring y'all along on this little journey. Ugh. That's really all I wanted to talk about. I don't know what was wrong with me. So that's my little two cents. You can do whatever you wanna do, but you're probably watching this video. It probably showed up on your feed for whatever reason, or maybe you're following me. If you are already subscribed, I thank you so much. If you are not and you're still still here looking at my beautiful face with my fro what are you doing i'm just gonna leave it there yeah go ahead and like comment and subscribe and you know let me know was this helpful have you ever been in a situation like this before so cringy i'm exhausted now